It's common knowledge that our children, especially our boys, are not near grade level in the area of math. How do kids initially get behind in math? What is taking place in the classroom and what year do they start to get behind in math? So I think that a lot of our children get behind in math from the beginning, from the moment that they enter the classroom. You know, if they're going to public schools, charter schools, even private schools, a lot of times they're not prepared for math class, right? There have to be prerequisite skills that ch children have to be imbued with in order that when they walk into the classroom, they have a certain level of confidence and ability to perform when the teacher presents new information, right? Oftentimes our children are overwhelmed because they've never heard of certain things. You know, they've never heard of like, you know, factors and multiples and they may not know their multiplication facts from memory, you know, up to 12 times 12. So, and I think it because as a community and as a society, we've been conditioned to just outsource math education completely, which is a problem, right? So if we think about the comparison between like ELA, English language arts, and mathematics, and how children perform in the ELA spaces as opposed to math spaces, right? Not to say that, you know, some students do have anxiety when they go into ELA class. Some students don't want to raise their hand and read out loud because they have, you know, you know kind of like trepidation about reading in front of the class. But there's less of that in ELA than there is in the math class. And I think that that's because from the time they're born, if they're speaking the English language as a first language, they're being indoctrinated into the English language and they're practicing the English language, you know, from birth. They're listening to their parents talk. They're listening to grandparents, uncles, aunts. They're listening to, you know, media. You know, they're listening to the English language. They're constantly immersed within the English language. So they're not being exposed to the math language. Like exactly. Language. Yeah. They're not immersed in the language of math. They're not immersed in the concepts of math. So when they go into math classrooms, they're overwhelmed. It's like they're getting hit over the head with all these new terminologies, new topics, new concepts. So, and that's when like a lot of times these, this anxiety creeps in and grabs a hold of these of our children. But, but based on your experience, like what age, I've read things where it's like, you know, if they're not up to a level in fourth grade, because what I've, what I've witnessed personally in education is that, I don't know, I can't, that's what I'm asking, I can't pinpoint the year, but it seems like because they don't have that foundation, they just stay behind for the duration of their schooling. Definitely, especially with mathematics, because it's so cumulative. It's like you can't, you can't escape that. Like, and, I, and I would say this, and I tell people this all the time, the multiplication facts are key. Now, of course, you need, you need to understand your addition facts and your subtraction facts from memory, right? It also helps to understand the concept behind like when, when addition is taking place, what is actually happening with the numbers when subtraction is taking place, what's actually happening with the numbers and the relationship between addition and subtraction. But then once you do that, then you gotta memorize your multiplication facts, right? You shouldn't just memorize them, you should also understand the concept of what is actually happening when you're doing like nine times three, right? It's repeated addition, nine three times, nine times three, nine three times, nine plus nine plus nine, right? And understanding like those relationships between numbers. A lot of students never memorize their multiplication facts. A lot of adults don't have their multiplication facts memorized, you know, up to 12 times 12. And, we can, and you can go beyond 12 times 12. We can go past 144. We can get up to, you know, the 15 facts, the 14 facts, 13, 16, 17. We can do that. A lot of times, you know, no, a lot of people don't do it. So we don't really even consider doing that. But it's nothing holding us back from doing it. And I think the more the better. So I would say that not knowing multiplication facts from heart is such a like, you know, hidden uh, problem because it affects like having, having taught higher level math classes in, in high school, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, trig, all of that. A lot of the problems students have as, and a lot of math teachers can attest to this, when you really break it down, like it's not even the new content that they don't really get. It's the foundation and just not knowing off the top of your head, seven times eight is 56. All right. The second part to the question is, right, um, what can parents do to help their children get on grade level in the subject of math? So there's several things that parents can do. One of the things parents can do is lead by example. A lot of parents have their own issues with math. A lot of parents have their own trauma. They experience their own trauma in school. And a lot of parents have deficiencies in not knowing multiplication facts, as an example, division facts, algebra. I think parents have to sit down and say, more parents have to sit down and say, look, I need to learn this. And if I learn this, then I can, be, I can model this behavior for my children, because then my children are going to see me learning it. What I'm doing is I'm instilling value in this activity, mathematics, and I'm letting them know that, like, yo, this is not just some, like, random extracurricular activity 
that happens to be a class that you got to take to get credit so that you can advance to the next grade, right? So parents, number one, I think, have to start leading by example. Um, that sounds easier. That's easier said than done. They need to get past that shame too, you know. They got to get past the shame. They do, and I, but I think like when you ask about grade level, I think that plays a part also. A lot of adults, once upon a time, might have been in tenth grade or eleventh grade, and somebody might have let them know like, "Yo, you have issues with adding fractions. You don't know how to add fractions with different denominators." And then they also realized at the same time when they was in tenth or eleventh grade, like, "Wait, but that's elementary school math, right?" Because we assign these grade levels to these different math skills, it makes you embarrassed. So you're like, oh, well, when was I supposed to learn that? Or a teacher might get mad in their own frustration and say something to the child when they're in 11th grade, like, yo, you should have learned that in third grade. Why you ain't learn that? So then now you've told the child, okay, this was third grade math. That was eight years ago. It's little kids that are learning this right now. And you 11th, in 11th grade, you 16, 17 years old and don't know it. You go, a lot of people are just embarrassed. So they're like, nah, rather than... Like, like you said, address the shame and go learn it and take a it's better late than never attitude. They just say, forget it. I'm just not going to learn it. Importance of parents healing from their own academic trauma. I remember when I was teaching, right? And a, a guy that was there for a while. It was my first parents teacher meeting. And um, he, I don't know if he told me before he told me after, but he basically was breaking down how these parents really just have a because they had a traumatic experience with school they don't like coming up there and when they come up there it's like it's like a ptsd i'm mm -hmm. not sure if that's a proper term but it's a traumatic form you know yeah. he said keep that in mind when you're interacting with the parent right uh you have immense experience in education right what advice would you give to a parent who suffers from that 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 trauma with education and with school i would say try your best to be more courageous you know and when i say courageous i mean like Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is being scared, but doing it anyway, you know, because what's at stake is your children's ability to understand mathematics. And when your children see that you have a fear of mathematics, they at times will internalize that, you know, and then they'll start to think, well, OK, yeah, this is difficult. Right. But it's supposed to be difficult. But the child will see, OK, this problem is difficult. I don't know how to really do it. So instead of persevering and still trying to learn how to do it, they say, well, look, my mom can't do math. My dad can't do math. My grandparents probably can't do math. I got uncles and aunties that can't do math. So look, maybe this is just, you know, this is just not for me. And then you got a lot of people saying things about like math genes and, you know, then children start hearing that. And we find a lot of reasons to not try to excel. So we have to like as adults, you know, address our own traumas and our own fears you know and even me like people you know probably wouldn't think that you know I got my own fears and issues with math you know because I remember you know even though through the the larger duration of my K through 12 student school experience for the most part I was good at math but I definitely had rough patches along the way and so I know how it feels to sit in class and like not understand I know how it feels and how to sit in class and not even know what question to ask, you know, because I really don't understand anything, any of this, this explanation, you know, that the teacher was providing. So and even sometimes now, like if I'm confronted with a math topic that I'm not as well versed in that, you know, that anxiety starts to creep in. But I got to I got to hold it at bay. I got to I got to regulate my emotion and check it and then remind myself who I am. Like, no, I really do this. You know, I got it. But I'm, I mean, I understand I speak from a space of luxury. So in privilege because I do math every day like this is my, my livelihood <laughs> like I do this every day like I'm doing math constantly whereas a lot of people aren't doing as much math as I do but I still experience a similar feeling that they have but you got to manage it and you got to like you got to persevere until you start getting right answers because I've gotten so many right answers from tutoring sessions from teaching sessions from years and years of teaching um, you know you know, it, it's a reminder that, no, I can do this, you know, and I think that's a lot of it, too. Like a lot of us just have to have the confidence that we can learn something like it's OK to not know it right now. Like, that's cool. But having the confidence to to believe that even though I don't know this right now, but if I dedicate time and energy and study toward this, I can learn it and I will understand it. Maybe give me a day, a couple of days, three days, four days. You know, maybe I got to get a book 
and like sit down and read the book on a regular basis, practice some problems. Or maybe I got to watch some YouTube videos, like somebody got to pull up my YouTube channel, all this math, right? And like watch some of my videos over and over again. But then you have the confidence that like, wow, okay, yeah, I didn't know this at this point. And now here it is a week later, two weeks later, now I do know this. So you got to have those experiences, but you got to put yourself in position to be able to, you know, have that experience.